that you shall give me reason why and wherein Caesar was dangerous. Shall mark it. But our reasons are so full of good regard that were you, Caesar's son, should be satisfied. That's all I seek. And am moreover sure that I may produce his body to the marketplace. And there in the pulpit, as becomes a friend, speak in the order of his funeral. Shall mark it. Brutus, a word with you. You know how much you do. Do not consent that he speak in his funeral. Know you how much the people may be moved by what he has to say. By your pardon. I will myself in the pulpit first, and give the people the reason for our Caesar's death. What Antony shall speak, he shall speak by leave and by permission. I know not what we call. I like it not. Mark Antony, take you Caesar's body. In your speech you shall not blame us, but speak of all good you can devise of Caesar, and say you do it by our leave and by our permission. Moreover, you shall go into the same pulpit whereto I am going, after my speech is ended. Else, you shall have no hand at all about his funeral. Be it so, I do desire no more. Oh, pardon me, thou bleeding piece of earth, that I am meek and gentle with these butchers. Thou art the ruins of the greatest man that ever lived in the tide of times. Woe to the hands that shed this costly blood. And Caesar's spirit, ranging for revenge, shall in these confines come hot from hell, and with Ate by his side cry heaven, and let's lift the dogs of war that this foul deed shall smell above the earth with carrying men groaning for burial. You serve Octavius Caesar, do you not? I do, my guess, think. Caesar did write for him to come to Rome. Yes, he did receive his letter and his coming. Oh, Caesar! Is thy master coming? He last night with the settlings of Rome. Post back with speed and tell him what hath chanced. Here is a morning Rome, a dangerous Rome. Thou shalt not back till I have borne this corpse in the marketplace. There shall I try, in my oration, how the people take the cruel issues of this bloody mess. Lend me your hand.